What's up, everybody? Pudge Fernandez here with another edition of Hot Pudge Sunday Facebook Live. Yes, I'm here for those for those New Yorkers and Queens residents. You guys know where I'm at. I'm at Gantry State Plaza by the Pepsi Cola sign over here along the East River. Some of the most expensive fucking property you're ever gonna see in Queens. These condos go for a lot of money and you want to know why they go for a lot of money because the beautiful view as you can see behind me again for those of you non-new yorkers i'm in technically i'm in queens i am in queens on the uh along the east river and behind me is the island of manhattan absolutely gorgeous view that's the 59th street bridge queens bridge in the house, 59th Street Bridge, and a beautiful, absolutely beautiful view of Manhattan on this glorious Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. This is the Pudge for the Hot Pudge Sunday, Mother's Day edition, live, Gantry Street, Gantry Street, Gantry State Plaza. I'm just trying to give everyone, I'm focusing on the view. I want everyone to see where I'm at. It's a beautiful day. This is Gantry State Plaza. Back in the day, man, when I was growing up in Queens, this place was nothing. There was nothing but emptiness and factories. There was really nothing out here. And then all of a sudden, of course, uh, during the Giuliani administration, a lot of properties got bought up and it was just a, a big boom. And all these condos, this whole park started going up. It was pretty, about 2009 it was completed. And yeah, it's very beautiful. A lot of high-end buildings. A little baseball insight. The Wilpons, owner of the Mets, I believe they have some property out here because some, some actual New York Mets live out here. They live right here in the plaza somewhere in one of these buildings because the 7 train is actually behind me a couple blocks away. So they put the Met players, the single guys or the guys just coming in, and then they hop on the train and go straight to City Field. And for those, for those comedians watching, uh, Creek in the Cave is about seven blocks behind me. So this is where I'm at, just to give you a gist. Long Island City, Hunts, it, Hunter's Point. Hunter's Point. Shout out to everybody who's watching. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I see Laurie. I see, yo, what's up, Lee? I'm making my list. Shout out to Rick Knight. Yeah, so this is Hot Punch Sunday Facebook Live. Mother's Day edition. I uh, hope everyone's having a great Mother's Day. Uh, God bless you and all your mothers. Uh, I know it's a special day. Thank you know, you know to give back, give back to the woman who pushed you out. Give back to the woman who carried you for nine months in labor. Today's the day. Shout out to all the kids who are who are making their moms breakfast. I see your Facebook posts. You're making moms the bacon, the eggs, and the burnt toast. Hey, God bless you guys. Shout out to you, Uncle Pudge. Sees you, sees you. I hope you guys had a good week. Uh, New York City has been an interesting week. Uh, of course, we're still under this corona lockdown, quarantine. Uh, but good, you know, a couple of good things are going on this week as far as the coronavirus. The numbers are dropping. The numbers are dropping. So for those, for those of you keeping score, at one point at its peak, uh, we were losing about 750, 770 people a night, a day. 770 people a day were dying at its peak from this coronavirus and happy to report the numbers are way down they're about 220 last i checked they're about 220 so you know hey we're moving we're moving the numbers are dropping numbers are dropping uh the hospitals aren't as packed as before there's still people getting sick there's still people getting admitted but you got to look at the bright side we went from losing 770 people a day to 220 so yeah let's keep moving let's stay quarantined uh you know how i do i'm not wearing the ppe before anybody says anything every fucking week someone says wear your mask okay i'm not i'm there's nobody around me all right barely so i make sure i'm more than six feet away from anybody because i'm not trying to breathe on anybody and vice versa so, but other than that, yes, I'm still indoors. I only go out to the park, do some exercise, and maybe yesterday I did some shopping. So, that's all I do. I'm still quarantined, get some, stretch my legs, and that's it. Gotta do what you gotta do. We're, we're going in the right direction, so let's not stop. Uh, another, another piece of good news is for all the New Yorkers, uh, Governor Cuomo announced that he extended the no eviction status for all people renting in New York City. So initially, he 
It started on March 20th. Uh, it was a 90-day no eviction uh, status till June 20th, but now he extended to August 20th. So shout out to everybody who's not paying rent, who was supposed to get evicted, and is not. I'll talk about more. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, pretty funny story. But yeah, shout out to everybody uh, who's not getting evicted. So, so good news so far. The numbers are down. Nobody's gonna get evicted, and they're gonna start opening things up slowly. As Cuomo likes to say, he's gonna turn the valve. He's gonna turn the valve slowly, which is, I think, absolutely the right thing to do. You know what I'm saying? You, you go full blast. You're just asking for, a, you know, another, a, a, you know, another spike in the numbers, and we don't need that shit. So, because we're doing good, it'll be a long, hot summer. Uh, baseball might be coming back, so that's that's my highlight. If baseball comes back, I'm good. I'm good. If baseball comes back, I'm real good. All right, so I'll be happy because I have something to watch. I mean, I'll be so happy. I'm not going to do this Facebook Live at one because there'll be baseball games. I'm moving it to 12. So just a heads up: if the Mets start playing at one o'clock game on Sundays, I'm moving this to 12 o'clock because I'm not missing. And it's one thing that I've been without for a while. I know we're all missing people. We're all missing things. We're all missing everyday life. But for me, it's baseball. I think is what I miss the most because this is. Thank you. What's up? Shout out to Penn. Penn who picked up Penelope, picked up a Harley the other day. God bless. A, a, a beautiful woman and a Harley. What gets? What's better than that? What's better than that? Only in New York City. Yes, let's go Mets. Yes, at least let's go Mets. I, that's my biggest thing, man. It's like, I mean, you think about it. You, you do something, it's ingrained. It's ingrained into every fiber of your body. Once April hits, you watch baseball for six months, right up into the World Series, and then it gets taken away from you. And it's like, especially on Sundays, this is why I'm doing Facebook Live, because on Sundays at one o'clock, that's when I get that itch. I get that because I'm so programmed to watch a, a beautiful Sunday afternoon baseball game, a Met game. I could be either I'm at home and if I'm working, I'm listening to it on the radio. So either way, I mean, it's just so ingrained. So I think it's one of the things I miss the most and I can't wait till they come back. And, and when they do come back, it sounds like it's going to be like a really, really exciting season. It's going to be a half season, but it's going to be stupid excited, exciting because uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but the way they created the divisions, it's not going to be the norm. Uh, the same divisions as before. Now they're just going to make, I think so far, from what I hear, it's three divisions. Three. East, Central, and West. And in the East will be the Mets, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Nationals, the Phillies. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking nuts. Fucking nuts. Like, too excited. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be pounding and banging each other out. That's going to be a hot. That's going to be the hottest division is the East with the Mets, the Yankees, the Red Sox. The Nationals, the Phillies. Yeah, Joe Girardi and the Phillies. Yo, he's going to be visiting the Mets and the Yankees. Holy shit. And then you got the the Tampa Bay Rays and the Marlins. Uh, we're all, we'll kick their ass, no problem. But, uh, but yeah, it's going to be hot. I can't wait. So, yeah, looking forward to the little things. Baseball. The little things. Uh, so, yeah, so far, beautiful day. Happy Mother's Day. It's been a good week. Mostly positive. Mostly positive. Uh, mostly positive. It's just, you know, of course, in life, there's always that, you know, negativity sometimes. And the thing that's been irking me the most, because uh, it's all over social media, you, you can't ignore it. I'm personally tired of it, is the case going down in, um, in Georgia with the father and son who got arrested for a, attacking a jogger, a black jogger, and killing him. Uh, shit, I don't even want to talk about it. Uh, not that I'm trying to ignore the issue or, or, or condone what happened, none of that. I'm just, I'm just these people are fucking tired. I'm fucking tired hearing about innocent people, innocent blacks being attacked and killed like nothing. And it's just, it gets really, really, I'm really tired. I don't know how, how anybody else grew up or, or lived but I've been hearing about this shit since I was a kid. It's, it's kind of fucking weird because, like, you know, you go to school as an, an elementary school and you, you learn about Martin Luther King and the civil rights. And you see all the damage, all the hate, the anger and the brutality that blacks received during the civil rights movement. And before that, slavery on down. You see all that. I mean, you, re you read about it in your history books. And you're like, holy shit. And then growing up here in New York City, you see it 
in the news happening in your city. I mean, ever since I was a kid, I mean, it's like there's always been a case. Uh, Howard Beach was what I, the one that you know pops out the most in my head. That was huge. That was huge. A couple of uh, black gentlemen uh, were stranded on the side of the road because their car broke down and they were in the wrong neighborhood. And one thing led to another. They were chased and one died uh, trying on, on the highway. He was trying to run away. Uh, so yeah. And that, that's just, that, was, that was my childhood. I think we were in, I think I was in junior high school or elementary school when that shit happened. And and to the and it still carries. It's still it's still going on. Here no, and now here we are. 2021, 20, 2020. I'm in the four, I'm in my 40s and I'm still reading about that shit. And if it's not in New York, it's happening somewhere else. So I'm it's kind of tiring. I don't even want to it's negative, I don't want to talk about it, but it's so out there, it's like this this is my two cents. I'm freaking tired of it. And it's like, what do we do? You know what I'm saying? It's like, and it's, and I feel like it's, you know, when it comes to being racist, you're not born racist. You're raised. It's it's a social, it's a social disorder. It's like, it's almost like a religion. I always, I feel like it's something they practice. You know what I'm saying? It's like a person, it's a weird personal religion that they practice. And it's, it's not, it's not a, disease. I don't know how it's, I don't know when and if it's ever going to end. I don't know if the law is ever going to do anything about it. But obviously it needs to stop. I don't know what are we going to do. But this, this case in Georgia with the jogger, the black jogger being attacked by the father and son because they thought he was stealing or burglarizing. I know it's a crock of shit. But uh, yeah, just it's just been on my mind all week because it's fucking unnerving. Unnerving. Uh, now to some uh, friendlier news. Yes, Alex Geo. Hookers. Yes, thank you. Good shout out. Shout out to Alex. Shout out to Alex. Thank you for lighting the yes, hookers walking around the neighborhood back in the day. Yeah, like I said in the top of my segment, uh, Long Island City behind me was desolate, empty, factories. There really wasn't nothing here. But of course, Alex Geo remembers hookers. Thank you. Prostitutes, women of the night. Yeah, walking the streets. Yeah, I remember back in the 80s and 90s, we used to ride around. I remember me and my friends, if we ever had a car, we, we'd jump in the car, we'd ride around New York and, and fuck around with the hookers, and yell at them and ask them for a discount, tell them it's our birthday, could we get a freebie? We did all that shit. I mean, that was just, you know, my time <laughs> growing up in New York. But yeah, shout out to Alex, bringing up the prostitution here in Queens, New York. Thank you. Thank you. And again, shout out to mothers, for every, all the mothers out there. I see you. I see you doing great things. I'm just, you know, when it comes to Mother's Day every year, everybody is, you know, it, it, God, I don't mean to be down, but it's like, yeah, a lot of positivity, a lot of love. You got to be grateful. You got to be grateful to all your moms and all the jobs they did raising you guys and everything. And everybody's trying to give back. And it's all happy-go-lucky, you know, good shit, I guess, you know. But here's my, you know, here's my question. What if, what if you had a shitty mom? I never hear anybody complain about, you know, having a shitty mom. Because it's impossible. I refuse to believe that every single person in the United States of America has an awesome mom. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the good moms, yes. But what about the shitty moms? Okay, I'm just curious because, like, what do you do? What do these, what do the, what do the people who had who had a shitty had a shitty life or, or were just given hell by the woman who who gave birth to them? How fucked up is that? How fucked up is he, you know we're born and we're taught to love and respect the woman who gave birth to us, but then they turn out to be shitty. You know what I'm saying? And and it's like, what do you do? What do you do if your mom is a narcissist? What do you do if your mom's a sociopath, a hypocrite that only cares about herself, who cares more about herself and her image than she does her kids? What do you do if your mom happens to be someone who, who, who lies and deceits and divides their family versus bringing them together? You know what I'm saying? It's like, what do you do? What do you do if your mom gives you an ultimatum? 
What if your mom gives you an ultimatum? Hey, hey, if you want to be, if you want to be in the in the inheritance, you have to divorce your wife. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? What do you do if your mom gives you an ultimatum? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put. Yeah, you're gonna be in the inheritance. We're gonna we're gonna call the lawyer. Yeah, we got we gotta figure things out. You're gonna be in it, but first you gotta divorce your wife. What do you do about that? Uh, a mom who gave birth to you but ends up hating your wife. What do you do with that on a Mother's Day? How do you take that in? How do you take that in? I mean, again, shout out to all the good mothers. I see you. Uncle Pudge sees you. Uncle Pudge sees the good mothers. Uncle Pudge sees the love. I see the love every day, all year round, not just Mother's Day. But what do you do if you have a shitty mom? <laughs> what do you have? What do you do if you have a shitty mom who wants to... <laughs> Who wants to wants you kick you out of the, kick you out of wait, kick you out of the house, not the not a nice way because you know you happen to be living there with your kids and I don't know so you know they may have been a marital uh, issue you know with with the son and his wife but she comes back home and she moves back in to help you know with the kids and be a family again but mom interferes and say hey get the fuck out what do you do how do you treat a mother who wants to evict her son and grandkids because she doesn't like the mother who happened to have cancer at the same time yeah yeah go how do you do that that is like a how does a person celebrate mother's day knowing that your granddaughter has an illness your son's wife has cancer, but you're going to evict them and take them to court. How do you celebrate Mother's Day? I'm just, I'm just throwing this out there. I don't. This is just popping my head. This is just popping. I don't know where this is coming from. I'm just making talk. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, we can go the easy route. Yay. You know, all moms, all positivity. But I refuse to believe that every single mom in this country or in the world is good. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so for those people out there with shitty moms, you know who you are. Like, what do you do? How do you celebrate? How do you celebrate? I mean, it's got to be a tough day. It's got to be a real tough day for those, you know, for the, who don't know, who don't just don't know what to do. I mean, you see the whole world celebrating. You see the whole world taking their moms out. You know what I'm saying? And then you're like, what What the fuck? Now, me personally speaking, I had a pre-Mother's Day event yesterday. So I had a, pre I had a good weekend. I had my, uh, it was my wife, my mother-in-law, and my sister-in-law over. We had a nice dinner. So, you know, so we had a cool, you know, my wifey works today. So we can't, we couldn't allow to do anything today. But we had a nice meal. All the kids, all the grandkids were there. We had a good time. It was good. It was a big relief, you know, under these corona conditions. So we had a great time. But here it is today's Mother's Day, and it's just, I don't know. It's kind of rough. You know, the brain starts working. This is, you know what I'm saying? So, so again, my question is, what do you do if you have a shitty mom? I need some answers. I don't know. I don't know. I used to drink. I used to drink a lot. I used to drink a lot. Uh, that was my go-to, personally. But, uh, of course, that turned into a, a very bad addiction. So, uh, and I'm three, three years, three years clean. So I got, you know, therapy, and I checked into uh, outpatient rehab at the VA. So God bless the VA and everyone who supported me. But, yeah, drugs and alcohol, if some of you guys, I know you guys go there because I went there. Don't, you know what I'm saying? But there's got to be another therapeutic way to handle this. I mean, what do you do if you, again, what if you do if you have a shitty mom who turns your siblings against you? From like one day to the next, it's like one minute. It's like, it's like Thanos. Snap a finger, boom, you're out of the family. Do you still celebrate Mother's Day? I don't know. These are just thoughts pondering my mind. This is just thoughts. These are just thoughts of you, okay? You guys get it. I think some of you guys get it. You guys know where I'm coming from. More, more of this shit's gonna come out in the near future when it, when it feels right. Today, being Mother's Day, felt wait till Father's Day comes around. Holy shit, that's gonna be an episode. 
<laughs> so yeah, this is my Mother's Day. Wait till Father's Day episode comes back comes out. Yeah, that's gonna be another personal episode. Yeah, people want to know if comedians are fucked up in the head and why they're so depressed or have these issues. Well, most of the time, not first of all, not all comedians are messed up, but many of them are, and this is why. It's usually some kind of post-traumatic stress from some kind of a childhood drama or or whatever, or the shitty moms. I don't know. It sounds corny. It sounds whack, but but hey. What's up, Penelope? Penelope, she was the first cut, and all the other toxic people are easy to remove from my life. Wow. Thank you. Shout out to Pen. Pen, she, uh, mom was the first cut. Yeah, that's where we're at. I mean, for those of you who haven't figured um, what I was talking about before was relating to me. But, um, yeah, being the first cut, basically, um, yeah, actually, it's funny. I made the first cut a couple of years ago. I actually fired my mom. Uh, I told her she's fired. I literally straight up fired my mom uh not for her actions towards me but because i got over that actually it was through therapy and and quit drinking i understood and that's the big thing you got to go to therapy you got to figure things out you got to get help and understand the situation and thank god for therapy i was able to do that and i was able to understand my mother i was able to understand where she came from and understand myself and 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 come to almost a conclusion almost a closure and it really helped me a lot and i thought i was moving forward here's the problem the reason is because all that bullshit that was you know she gave me before she was now giving to my kids especially my daughter pudge don't play that all right when it comes to my kids you don't fuck around so and she, and i think all mothers being a mothers that you guys can relate all right when it comes to my wife and i uh, a lot of people know my wife but hey we've been together we've been married we've been separated we've been on the verge of divorce we've been at each other's throats uh, we hated each other we've been through a lot but when it comes to our children we are not we've always been united and we've always been bear lions and bears all right i'm the lion she's a bear and we will kill maul maim attack dismantle anything or anybody that hurts our kids that's how we are because we love our kids so again you know marriage has been shitty in the past we're cool now we're cool now but when it came to parenting we were always united on that front and to go back get back to my point the shit that was happening to me that i was over with and moved on past was now hitting my kids especially my daughter so i fired my mom about two years ago i basically said you're fired you're not a mother and you sure as hell not a fucking grandmother so that's that's where it went so yeah and i'm pretty sure that started well there was always a there was already a rift there was already issues there was already drama but she probably didn't like that i did that being the narcissist that she is and it, I probably, you know, set it off, which kind of led to the part where we got evicted. But like Penny said, shout out to my girl Penny in Jersey with the Harley now. Yeah, you got to make cuts. You got to cut toxic people no matter who they are. Some of them are friends. Some of them are family. You got to do what you got to do. You have to cut. And we can't wait to cut. It just so happens uh, we're supposed to be uh, evicted. Oh, getting back to the eviction. Hilarious. So... We get, first of all, when they told us to leave, I proposed to sit down and talk things out and conversate. Yeah, they had a few, they had, you know, we had issues and they had, they had a few good points. They had a reason to be mad. You know, they had a reason to be mad, but I thought, you know, hey, I don't know. We're family. We're supposed to communicate and talk things out, you know, reasonably, like adults. But no, they just threw us in the bucket, got the lawyer, started the, pay the paperwork, got my daughter's name. I mean, how the fuck do you drag my daughter into court? Why? It's fucking ridiculous. She doesn't even go and do this shit. So they just started the process with all the paperwork and shit. And we started going through court. And meanwhile, my, again, my wife is battling her. She had thyroid cancer last year. So she's going through the cancer and I'm going to eviction court. So it was a fun 2019. Uh, but we both got through it. Anyway, as far as the eviction, uh, the, the judge asked us to sidebar with a mediator to try to resolve 
come up with a date because you know we weren't trying to stay we the funny thing is we were going to we planned to move the whole the whole time just they trying to force us out uh, at you know with the quickness so we actually came to an agreement we i think it was we were supposed to leave by last 2019 uh i think september october we actually came to an agreement to leave the premises and mind you it was dicey because I was the only one working. Wifey was recovering and looking for a job. So it was pretty dicey for me to commit to leave by September, October. But we wanted to get the, we get the hell out of there and move on with our lives. So I agreed to September, October. I only asked for just one little stipulation, just one little stipulation. I just one request and that was moving money. I requested for moving money. I said, hey, she's not working. I'm the only one working. Hey, we're ready to get out of here. We, you know, we don't want to be what we're not wanted. Not, not, and not for now, now that we're back together as a family, we need a bigger place naturally. So we were ready to move. But, and all I asked for was moving money. And they said no. When I say they, I mean mom and stepdad said no. Too fucking cheap. So what happens? Let's fast forward. All right. Uh, we still they didn't want to come to an agreement. So now we have to go to court till November and then at November We got the date of June 1st So fine June 1st is the move on. I don't have to tell you the rest Corona's in charge Corona's in charge Corona hit So now the June 1st move out date got pushed thanks to Governor Cuomo with the no eviction to June 20th And now he just pushed it again to August so is that not fucking karma or what? They ticked themselves. Yes, mom and dad ticked themselves. They could have had me out. They could have had all of us out. We agreed that we could have been out last year. But because of their greed, because of their selfishness, because of their hate, because of their failure to communicate, failure to, uh, to, to act properly. And these are, these are adults. These are, are allegedly parents. They got fucked in the ass. They fucked themselves. And now who knows when we're moving. And I and they're upset. They're bitter about it. Because I know they're talking to other family members. They're living there for free. They're living there for free. Oh my God. I the earth meal. We didn't ask for this shit. We could have been out last year. But you guys are too fucking cheap. You want to pay for a lawyer. You want to pay the fees. You want to pay for a lawyer. But you didn't want to give us moving money under the condition I, i'm working she's not she's recovering from cancer and you want us out so badly it was just a couple of thousand dollars to help us move that's it but you want to pay for a lawyer makes no fucking sense so go it goes back to my question how do i celebrate mother's day <laughs> how do i celebrate mother's day? i'll celebrate it today with you guys it's a beautiful day uh, had a great meal yesterday with my wife, the mother of my children, her mom, her sister, who's a mother of three. And you just, you know, like Penn said early, just cut and move on. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm moving on with my family and I'm moving on with my comedy career. So, and just uh, ready for this coronavirus to clear up. Hopefully get back to work and get the fuck out. I ain't trying to be in that house anymore. I want to respect disrespect. So, oh, they, they opened up a can of worms. I'm not, I'm not going to get into it anymore, but they, they're fucking with the wrong person. It's kind of sad. I mean, this is my mother who gave birth to me, but she doesn't know me. My stepfather who knows me since she, he married her since I was like seven or eight, and he doesn't know me. But they want a dick my family and my kids around that's that's not gonna fly that's not gonna fly uncle pudge uncle pudge is like an elephant yeah i'm fat but i don't forget this is not gonna fly and that's all i'm gonna say about that it's it, i don't know but it is a beautiful day it is the beautiful day so let's just take it i'm gonna take it with you guys i gotta be out of here soon so listen to everybody one more time happy mother's day to all the great moms the good moms the awesome moms the moms that that, that knew how to be moms and yeah nobody's perfect they all make mistakes but i feel like at least the good moms will acknowledge it the good moms would apologize the good moms will communicate because as long as you can be a bad mom it happens nobody's problem i was i'm a dad i fucked up a lot 
boy, I fucked up a lot, especially with my son. I'll be the first one to say I'm not the fucking best father of the year. But I did acknowledge it, and I did apologize, and I did explain. I did communicate to my son and my daughter and, and, and my wife and my therapist. Because otherwise, what? The last thing I want is for my kids to grow up like me. <laughs> I fucked up in the head. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, shout out to all the moms, all the dads. Don't forget to communicate to your kids because at the end, it doesn't matter. We all make mistakes, but you can recover. It is recoverable. It is reco- God, it's a beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. My, I want to get a fucking apartment out here. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to come here again. Again, if you're, if you're tuning in late, Gantry State Park. Uh, it's on the, it's right on the East River of Queens. So this is the most western part of Queens. There's the East River where a lot of, a lot of bodies. If, you, if, you're, if you're from New York, you know what's in the East River. Bodies. Bodies, witnesses, and, and <laughs> maybe a few weapons or two. And the Manhattan skyline, absolutely beautiful. Anyway, I think that's the cue. I'm going to get out of here, guys. Hey, happy Mother's Day one last time. Hot Put Sunday, Facebook Live. Hey, guys, don't forget tonight, 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 I got my Instagram show. All right, Hot Put Sunday one-on-one. Every Sunday, 8 o'clock, Hot Put Sunday one-on-one. I interview somebody different, a uh, celebrity, comedian, uh, somebody interesting, somebody cool. Uh, tonight, I got comedian Pete Burdett, the one and only Pete Burdett from Queens, New York. So if you're from Queens, definitely. He's born and raised in Queens. I love him to death. He's 100% Queens. That's why I'm having him on. And he's a bit of a celebrity himself. Uh, he had a thing with Debbie Gibson. If, tune in to find out. But yes, he has a thing for Debbie Gibson. And they actually, well, just tune in. Tune in. It was, it was it, I'm not saying they hooked up. I'm just saying just tune in to hear the story. But yeah, Hot Put Sunday, one-on-one. Instagram Live tonight, 8 o'clock. And again, every Sunday, Hot Put Sunday, Facebook Live, 1 o'clock. I'm going to be from a different location in New York City. So, yeah, this, this week I'm in Gantry State Plaza. And I still got to do Brooklyn. I still got to do Brooklyn. But uh, and I still got to do the Bronx, but I'm working on it. All right. So, guys, behave, be safe, take care. I'll see you guys next week.